Okay, I will call to order the Haywood County Board of Commissioners meeting for November 5th, 2018, and ask everyone to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. And I'd like to ask uh, Reverend Patrick Womack to come forward, give our invocation. May we pray. Most gracious God, our Father, we give you praise and thank you for yet another day. We thank you for your grace and mercy in such evidence around us. But Lord, as we call out to you, we ask for mercy and pray that you will grant to these who deliberate today, these are commissioners elected to represent us, that you will grant wisdom and discernment as we ask each time. But Lord, we truly do ask. Enable them to probe issues and to discuss matters in a way that uh, leads them to truth and the ability to decide based according to your immutable will. And Lord, grant that uh, in the carrying out of their duties and responsibilities, that you will alleviate their burdens as they bring to this, uh, this meeting their own personal concerns and cares. Help them and minister to them as they serve all of us. Lord, we ask your blessing, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, now we'll move to the public comment session. No one has signed up this morning for public comment, but if anyone would like to come forward, uh, they may do, some, do, do so at this time. Anybody want to come forward with public comment? I would say we got a pretty good crowd here today. That's good. Uh, okay, if there's no public comment, we'll move to constituent concerns. I'll start with you, Brandon. Do you have any? Don't have any this week. Okay. I don't have any. Oh, all right. We're moving along this morning. Next is administrative agency reports. We've got some new county employees. Bryant is going to introduce those county employees. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Health and Human Services, we have Allison P. Garrett, Cecilia Guerrera Smith, Grizel Gonzalez Juke, Ellen V. Burns. You, you, you can stay standing. Uh, in technology, we have uh, Robert Tyler Hughes. Sam Stone. Uh, the Sheriff's Office folks couldn't be here today because of scheduling conflicts, but in development and facility services, we have Cole Sutton. And the library, we have Stephanie Coleman. And uh, in cooperative extension, we have a new horticulture agent named Rob Anderson. Those are our new employees. All right. That's good, that's a good turnout. And uh, thank you very much for being here this morning. We just want you to know that uh, when you start working for the county, how we appreciate you being part of our, our family here at the county. And um, commissioners, you have anything you say, want to say to anybody? Welcome. Welcome, and this is a good place to work. Yeah. Yep. Welcome, thank you. All right, we appreciate your dedication and look forward to working with you. Thank you. And uh, if you need to go now, you, you're more than welcome to go. Or you can stay. All right, next, um, James Holmes uh, from Stevens Incorporated is here to report to us the proceeds from the sale of Haywood Regional Hospital to Haywood Healthcare Foundation. He's the Vice President and Senior Financial Consultant for Private Client Group. Good morning, Mr. Holmes. Good morning. Good morning. I hope everyone's doing well this morning. Another beautiful day coming up in Haywood County. Uh, again, my name is Jim Holmes. Uh, I work with Stevens Incorporated in Winston-Salem. Uh, our firm was founded in 1934. We're privately owned and we're honored to manage the money for the Haywood Healthcare Foundation. Uh, while I live in Winston-Salem, I also am a proud homeowner in Waynesville as well. Uh, we've had a home here for 21 years and I can't spend quite enough time up here, but we really love it. 
Um, the stock markets, as you might have noticed in the last month, have undergone quite a bit of volatility. Uh, concerns out there right now seem to focus on uh, the tariffs with China, uh, conflict uh, with Iran as what's going on there, and interest rates, as well as the upcoming election. So there's been a lot of volatility in the last month. You've seen the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, and the S&P 500 all move into correction territory, which is a drop of 10 percent. Fortunately, I think we're starting to see that come back, and I think after we get past the elections, irregardless of how they turn out, I think you'll see the markets improve through the end of the year. Um, the money that we are managing uh, for the county that came to uh, the foundation earlier this year, we had a tranche of about $3 million that came to us in February and another tranche of about $5 million that came in April for a total of $8 million. Um, we have uh, broken that down, and I think I forwarded to you a copy of our asset allocation, and this is something we will stick to going forward to, to try to manage the money in the most efficient way possible. Currently in stocks or in equities as they're called, we have approximately 58 percent across a number of categories including large cap value and growth, uh, mid cap value and growth, and small cap core and small cap growth. In addition, we have another 10 to 11 percent in international and emerging markets. Those areas have not been very kind to us in the last year or so because the strength has been in the U.S. economy, so we've seen U.S. markets perform better. However, during this past month, uh, pretty much everything went down. So again, just confined pretty much to the month of October, you saw a 10 percent decrease overall. Now our account, because we also have 20 percent in bonds and another 10 percent in cash, did not go down as much as the markets did. We went down a total of about 5 or 6 percent as opposed to 10 percent. We have since recovered, and as of Friday, we're only down about 3 percent year to date. So we're ahead of where the markets are, and we're making a strong move towards a comeback. Again, our allocation is set up for the longer term. We're not trying to time markets or you know, hit it in the short term. We're looking over the longer term to be as efficient as possible and to generate the best returns for these monies from the sale of the hospital. With that, are, are there any questions at this, for me at this point in time? Okay. Commissioner, do you have any questions? Uh, and I would say for clarification for everyone um, that these are the monies, these are, this is a portion of the monies from the sale of the hospital that have been uh, transferred to Haywood Healthcare Foundation. And um, Mr. Holmes is just reporting on the investment of those monies that have been transferred. He, and you provided this report, I think last week we had a yes. Haywood Healthcare Foundation yes. meeting. Uh, provided that. And I think it's a good thing in, in, in terms of transparency for me to appear before you folks on a somewhat regular basis, maybe every six months to, to annually, whatever you know, your thoughts would be, but just to update us on where we stand. Next time we'll try to schedule when there's an uptick in the market. Please do, instead yeah. Of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's way better. Yeah. All right. If no one has any questions, so thank you very much, Mr. Thank Holmes. you. Thank you. All right. Next, um, do we have any adjustment to the agenda? Need to add anything? All right. Uh, if not, we'll move to the consent agenda. Next is request approval of October 15, 2018 regular meeting minutes. Anyone have any changes, corrections, deletions to those? All right. Um, and we'll move to the application of the North Carolina Public School Building Capital Fund for lottery proceeds to pay for the current year debt service of $190,102.50 for the Pisgah High School Addition Renovation Project. Julie Davis is with us. Good morning. Morning. I have an application for you to approve that the school board has already approved. This is um, lottery proceeds that we use on an annual basis to cover the debt service. We, you remember in about 2013, we borrowed for the Pisgah High School renovation for 10 years, so we're um, um, a little ways into that loan, and we're asking for approval to draw down the lottery proceeds to um, cover the debt service. 
Okay, commissioners, have any questions about that? This is just a payment that's been ongoing for five years. Yeah, how many years are we into this, four or five? Yes, yeah, we are, we're five years, it was 2013. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. So we got five more. Okay, all right, thank you, Julie. I guess you've got a couple more on here. I've got a few more budget amendments. All right, I'll let you uh, go ahead. Let's see. You want to go ahead and cover the next one? Just explain it so I won't take away everything. You can you can say whatever you want to about All the right. budget amendments. <laughs> That's fine. The next one is a $500 budget amendment for um, um, social services in our Health and Human Services Agency, and it's for the Family Caregiver Support Program through Region A. And this is to recognize the caregivers that, that help those who are um, in need at the adult day care. I hate to put you on the spot. Do you know what day that is? November uh, 2nd. November 2nd. Okay. We've yeah. already passed it. All right. Well, it's already, you're right. It's already passed. So we're, we're, we've got the funds. We're going to have to pay the bills apparently for this. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, any questions about that, commissioners? All right. If you'll move to the next one, Health and Human Services Agency, 12,492. This is another one uh, for Health and Human Services. This is actually a reduction in the budget of $12,492, and this is to reflect a, a reduction in the amount that we have budgeted for this particular program. This is for adoption, awareness, and promotion. And we had money that we had not spent last year of about $17,508. And we had budgeted 30000 for this year. So we're reducing it now to the 17508 which is a reduction of the 12492 Okay, commissioners, have any questions about that? I don't see that much. No. Reduction. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. The next one is a $10,000 grant for um, the extension office. This is from the Cherokee Preservation Foundation, and this is for their youth leadership program. All right. Commissioners, have any questions about that? And that is the, uh, we have, we've done that for, I don't know how many years, but several years of that leadership we, yes, program. Yes, we have um, received this uh, grant in the past. Okay. This is a, an, another new one. All right. Commissioners, if you don't have any questions, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. So moved. Second. second. All right. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And that passes unanimously. We do not have any old business this morning, so we'll move to new business. Uh, first item on new business is request approval of payment of $1,600 for operational costs to the fairgrounds for the Santa Pals program provided by Evergreen Packaging to assist Haywood County School System. Commissioner Kevin Inslee is presenting on that. Yeah, we, uh, the fairgrounds have become a, a good place for uh, the Santa Pal to have the Evergreen Packaging when they do their to get all that together and uh, for the for our uh, kids in our school so the rent for the building is sixteen hundred dollars and this is the way that the county can contribute to uh, that uh, organization so okay so the, basically on this one the county's paying the sixteen sixteen hundred dollars to the fairgrounds to allow Santa pals to operate uh, out of the fairgrounds right Right. And, and the reason we're doing that is because that's $1,600 that can go toward those kids rather than them having to pull that out to pay. Right. right. Yeah. And we did it last year as well. Right. So. Yes. Yeah. That's okay. a, good, a good thing. Good program. How, good how program. long does it, what's, what does it take them about a week or so to put yeah. all that together? So. Yeah, something like that. They do it in December. Yeah. Is when they've got it rented for. They like the, the, the lower building. It works real well because it's got a, a large garage door. And it just, they can butt back their trucks in and then they've got a lot of room to be able to organize and, and get that in and out. So they really appreciated it last year and uh, they had been using the armory, but they, they liked this building better. And uh, they had called Brandon and, and me both about 
I don't know, a few a couple of months ago about it. So it's funny you say that there has come up today. I had two individuals that approached me over the weekend with uh, positive comments about the program that we got going on. So it was That's it good. was good to hear that. So okay. Any other questions? Comments? Okay. Not. We'll in, I'll entertain a motion to approve the payment of sixteen hundred dollars for the operational operational cost uh, to the care. Fairgrounds for the Santa Pals program provided by Evergreen Packaging. So move. Second. Any discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And that passes unanimously. Next is request approval to purchase a 2019 F-250 truck from Asheville Ford for the Emergency Services Department in the amount of $30,848.58 to be paid from budgeted funds. Travis Donaldson with Emergency Services. Our Deputy Director is here with us. Good morning, morning. Commissioners. Um, what we're requesting this morning is for the purchase of a F-250 2019 model from Asheville Ford. Uh, we obtained three quotes, one from Andy Shaw, uh, one from Taylor, and one from Asheville. Uh, Asheville was our low quote by $812. Uh, this is coming out of budgeted funds. I think Julie's following up with a budget amendment after uh, this request um, for an estate settlement. Um, during this year's fit, uh, budget process, we'd requested to replace three aging vehicles, and due to lack of funding, we were only able to do one, and this gets us up to two replaced in this year, trying to catch up to, to what we're behind on. Okay, commissioners, and uh, the, the funds that they are utilizing uh, came from the Lawrence Ross estate. Lawrence Ross estate um, uh, it bequested some monies to the county uh, for the school, I mean, for the EMS as well as um, the library. And so you're utilizing a portion of these funds to purchase this truck that was already budgeted. I think the fire, fire departments also received money. Um, as well, and the sheriff's department. Yeah, and, so we and, and for the public thank out there, his these, estate. Yeah, these these vehicles are used for uh, quick response towing uh, response trailers. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll be have medical equipment, AEDs, stuff like that in them to be able to assist with medical calls, run medical calls. Yeah. All right, commissioners, have any other questions? Travis, you said this was to catch us up or help catch us up. How, how many vehicles are we behind on, do you think? Uh, to get me where I need to be, I would like it ideally be able to get one more and then continue on the cycle with ambulance replacements where we're at in future budgets. Okay. All right. Any other questions, commissioners? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the purchase of the 2019 F-250 from Asheville Ford. Who had the lowest bid in the amount of thirty thousand eight forty eight fifty eight? I'll move. Second. Any discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, and that passes unanimously. Thank you, Travis. Thank you. Um, and now we've got the budget amendment for that, Julie. The. Um the amount of money that was received for EMS was $51,749.92, and they're taking $30,849 of this and using it to purchase this new vehicle. So we're putting the, um, that amount into their budget at this point. Okay. Commissioners, have any questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the budget <coughs> amendment um, to take the $30,849 out of the General Fund for Public Safety to pay for the truck that we just approved. So move. Second. Any discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, and that passes. Thank you. All right. Next, we have request approval to purchase 2017 Ford Interceptor SUV from Ken Wilson Ford for the Sheriff's Office to be used as a K-9 vehicle in the amount of $28,679.14. <coughs> Uh, including tax and tag, 25058 to be paid from budgeted funds and 3621 to be paid from unauthorized substance tax funds from the Sheriff's Office. We have our Sheriff with us, Greg Christopher and Major Jason Smiley. Hey, morning. good morning, man. Uh,
we had $25,058 left in our original budget, and we were looking for a SUV type vehicle to make a canine vehicle out of, and we were able to find a 2017 that was brand new, still on the lot, and uh, the lowest price that came in out of the six of the dealers that bid was the 27838 so uh, the difference between what we already had in our original budget and what we uh, needed was uh, the $3,621, and we would like to uh, be able to use our un unauthorized control substance tax to be able to finish purchasing that vehicle. There's two of them. We're going to get two of them today. Hey, yes, sir. So that this one is the 28. Whether well, we had 2558. Yes. Okay. That was We're already approving item number four. Yes. Okay. Commissioners, have any questions about that? <clears throat> sounds like a pretty good price. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Just it sounds like. I wish I could get that. <laughs> that that, that, that it really is a deal. <laughs> Two thousand. If you're pricing trucks now, it's. <laughs> Yeah. We're talking about forty-five, fifty thousand. I know. know, yeah. It's, it's, it's in a different ten thousand range, and this is the low three. So, <laughs> and, and and this is a uh, all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive type vehicle wow. as well. So, yeah, forty-five or fifty, you're right, Bill. At yeah. least. <laughs> yeah, we felt very blessed to be able to, <laughs> to find this one and this other one. I'm going to talk about in just a minute. That's great. When I look for a vehicle, I'm going to get one, whoever you got in charge yeah. of that to help me. We'll let you off. <laughs> uh, Ma Major Smiley does that work for yeah. us. Hey. Uh, well, it, it also sounded like that the, uh, I think, Ken Wilson Ford on this? Yes. Yeah. They had to do some research and look throughout the country for this. That they to sure find did. These. Yeah. They sure did. So, oh, so we're, through Conley good, we've got good. Uh, relationships with a particular local uh, dealerships and all that probably go the extra mile to try to help us out. Uh, and, and they do. Yeah. They do a great job. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to approve the purchase of the 2017 Ford Interceptor SUV from Ken Wilson Ford um, for the amount of 28679 dollars Twenty-five fifty-eight to be paid from budgeted funds and three thousand six twenty-one fourteen from authorized substance tax funds. So move. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, and that passes unanimously. And then we'll have a budget amendment for that. Julie. The, the budget amendment is only $3,622, and this is from the unauthorized substance tax that you just talked about. The, um, the money for the vehicle was in the, uh, the balance of the vehicle was in their budget, as well as I think there was some equipment that they are going to be using on this vehicle that they already had. They do have some um, carryover money on this uh, unauthorized substance tax, but it looks like they're on track to collect enough money to cover this $3,622, so I increased their budget and used their current year revenues for the drug seizure funds to cover this. All right, commissioners, have any questions about that? I'll entertain a motion to approve the budget amendment in the amount of $3,622 to cover the balance needed for the purchase of the 2017 Ford Interceptor we just approved. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, and that passes. And I believe you got another vehicle, Sheriff. Uh, yes, sir. We're, we're very blessed to have been one of the recipients of uh, the Ross Estate Settlement Funds. And because of that, uh, one of the dire needs that we have at the Sheriff's Office is going to always be vehicles. And uh, for that reason, because we found the first vehicle at such a reasonable price, we thought we would use and request that we use those funds from the Ross Estate uh, uh, settlement to purchase another one of these vehicles. So, uh, and we uh, to add the uh, the amount of the money that for the equipment as well, okay. uh, which is which totals thirty four thousand five eighty three fifteen. 
Okay, commissioners, have any questions about that? All right, if not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the 2017 Ford Interceptor SUV purchase from Ken Wilson, the lowest bidder in the amount of 27838 um, with equipment installation cost of 5904 for a total of 34583 to be paid for from budgeted funds. I move. Second. Is this four-wheel drive? Excuse me. Is it a four-wheel drive? Yes, sir. This is a really good price for four-wheel drives. We need to come to you if we need to buy a vehicle, don't we? Hey, sure. I just wish I had some more money in this budget to be able to, <laughs> to, to purchase some, uh, a couple more like this. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Have we had the first and second, or are we still discussing? No, it was first and second. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it, it, how, how long do these vehicles generally last if, you know, providing they're not in an accident or something? Well, we, we put about 30,000 miles a year at least okay. on each one of these vehicles because of the amount of, of uh, roads that we have in this county, right. and these guys are working 12-hour shifts, mm -hmm. plus... Uh, sometimes we have to use these vehicles to be able to transport uh, inmates all over the state of North Carolina. So if if we get if we get four years, we are very very blessed. And uh, but after that time, the maintenance cost, and that's something that uh, Major Smiley works on just about daily, yeah. is working. And I know I've talked to, to some of y'all about our maintenance issues, our maintenance cost. It's uh, it, it's very very expensive to uh, keep these vehicles rolling like that they roll. Yeah. So. Well, and these the mileage are they're they're tough miles too. They're and not, they are they're very just not tough riding miles. up and down the interstate. They're back in the roads, up and down the mountains, and all absolutely. Over the place. And you know, one of the things, uh, the difference between where I used to work on highway patrol, we stayed out on these main roads, and uh, the sheriff's office guys, they have to actually go to your house, and we have people that live in some really tough yeah. places, and uh, that's the reason that in the last three years we have tried to buy all-wheel drive vehicles to support what we do and because we ran out of some of the older four-wheel drives we've been able to mm -hmm. uh, uh, we've been blessed by uh, having you support us getting those all-wheel drive vehicles so we can get to people's houses and and to different locations that we mm -hmm. need to get to All right, we got a first and second. That was the discussion. All in favor of approving the um, purchase of the 2017 Ford Interceptor SUV from Ken Wilson for the total of 34583.15, indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And that passes unanimously. Okay. All right, and then we have a budget amendment. Thank you for that one as well, Julie. I'm getting my exercise this morning. The sheriff's <laughs> office received $38,812.44 from the Ross Trust, and they're using 34000 like we said, for the vehicle. So I've just put that money in the vehicle and showed that revenue in the budget. Okay. Commissioners, have any questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the budget amendment for 34583 for the purchase of the 2017 Ford Interceptor SUV for the sheriff's office. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And that passes unanimously. All right. Thank you, Julie. Next, we have a request approval of sewer easement and agreement from Haywood County to Junaluska Sanitary District for the temporary construction and installation of a sewer pump station and lines to be located on county-owned property at 71 Learning Lane, Clyde. David Francis, our program administrator, is with us this morning. Good morning, mornings. Hope everybody's doing well today. Um, as I said, this is a uh, temporary sewer easement uh, for Junaluska Sanitary District for the River Bend Elementary School. But let me jump back a little bit in time just to make sure everybody knows what, why we are with this. In uh, the fall of 2015, with the help of Junaluska Sanitary District, uh, the county wrote a grant proposal to the Golden Leaf for a $1.5 million sewer extension along Highway 209, basically from Smoky Mountain Rehab or Richland uh, Creek Road up to the River Bend Elementary. And part of this project would uh, eliminate two notice of violations that are occurring for uh, sewer or septic issues out at the truck stops uh, for uh, discharge issues. 
And also at the tail end of this is Riverbend Elementary, which is on a, a, an equated system that is you know, in the final stages of life. So these connections would help along uh, those businesses along the way retain and hopefully grow employment, uh, what uh, you know, right now we're presently at 80, uh, 85 folks now. So those uh, businesses there along exit 24 is a prime place for growth. Uh, Candy and I uh, reached out to a couple of businesses uh, along uh, that would make perfect fits there. Uh, so we will continue uh, this process now that we know that we have a project going forward. You know, we've had a few setbacks. Uh, we did not get the full $1.5 million from Golden Leaf, but we did get a million. Uh, Josh uh, Nickel, uh, the director of JSD, has been very persistent and done a great job working with the Golden Leaf folks, working with the state revolving fund. And also, remember too, commissioners, the county did uh, contribute $300,000 to this project. So I'm glad to say that we are uh, ready to uh, start uh, digging and putting some lines in and getting this project fully underway. But part of this is discovery when we're putting a bow on this project, we learned that the Riverbend Elementary uh, School uh, grounds are still under title for the Haywood County, not under the school system. During that time when the school system is under a financial obligation, the, the county uh, is the obligor uh, for that project, or excuse me, for that property, and it just did not get transferred in the time. Mr. Killian, uh, at the next agenda item, will, will, will transfer the, the, the property back to the school system. And this easement will follow the school system uh, back uh, uh, to, uh, to, I mean, this, the sewer easement will follow back to the school system with the title change as well, too. So what we're see seeking is just that uh, agreement to, to put the uh, uh, sewer line connections onto the uh, school county property at this point. All right, commissioners, any questions of David about this? I, I do, David. Uh, sure. So now, this is just to extend this. I know I'm going back in time, but mm -hmm. the 1.5 that was spent, is that to extend it to the school out there now? So, so it'll... I just want to make sure I understand it. Okay. Right. So the, the full project starts at basically at Smoky Mountain Rehab. Right. And goes, it's there now. Is that it correct? goes right there. So it'll start, the sewer project will start there basically and go all the way out to Riverbend Elementary. Um, you know, with a little trick or two, they have, they're going under Interstate 40, you know, to make those connections happen. Right. Yeah. So the, the total project's around $3.2 million. But we already spent 1.5, is that correct? No, that was a golden leaf amount. That was, that was the okay. grant amount okay. that we had. Uh, okay. the, uh, only, the only thing the county yeah. had was, was, uh, was about a 300,000 uh, matching part of that grant. Yeah. And it was done back in 2015. Golden Leaf actually was going to different areas of the state and looking for projects that would help economic development mm -hmm. in uh, throughout and in 2015 it was our side the western part of the state so we uh, they asked each county to uh, uh, submit uh, you know a couple projects that could be eligible for uh, uh, that grant and uh, we submitted the 209 project and some of the criteria on it was uh, you know to help existing businesses potentially to grow to potentially have additional uh, growth on economic development and then also the school system uh, being able to uh, uh, hook or, or provide them the sewer on an antiquated uh, septic system down there that was one of the uh, key things on this grant too so uh, and we were we did we we did win the grant it was you know we applied for 1.5 but uh, we ended up with one million, and you know, of course, Lake, Lake Junaluska, their board, and all stepped up to the plate, and uh, and was able to uh, you know find the additional monies, and you know saw the uh, the. Uh, uh, that, that this project was going to, you know, would be beneficial to the area down there. So uh, it's been a little while uh, coming to fruition. Uh, just simple reason, you know, it just takes a while to get all the uh, yeah. everything in order, and then you know, of course, getting it out to bid and everything. So, but we're ready to move now. Yeah. It's a big and project. This, this big is going to save the school system a lot of money because I think that system is at a point where they're going to have to do something about it. Yeah, it's it's in its last leg, so Less, to speak. Yeah. Right. It's right. an old sand filtration system, and they uh, did some upgrades to it a few years ago, but there, there's not another repair area for them to go yeah. back and use at this it, point. It's an old sand system, yeah. if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Right. And then, uh, you know, uh, the Bethel uh, Elementary uh, a sewer system out there that we installed out there was over a million dollars. So uh, it's potentially uh, that you could have had that kind of expense down there and, and not had a place to put it. So this this is definitely a, uh, 
a, a, a great thing to have, not only for that school area, but, but for the whole area down there. Uh, we've identified it as a potential growth quarter, and uh, uh, yep. so. Mm -hmm. And all we're doing today, this is just for the easement. Correct. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's just the easement on the property. Correct. I think Air 300,000 is budgeted too, isn't it, mm -hmm. Julie? Yeah, it was budgeted. What? I'm sorry, sir? The, the 300,000 has been budgeted. In the budgeted and, and I'm, I'm just talking about the project, not really yeah, not this. It's budgeted and uh, we have uh, uh, granted that those funds to JSD in June of 2017. Oh, okay. 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 And like you said, the only reason we're we're doing the easement is because when the school system, when they had had that addition down there, they had to borrow the money with the bond. So they have the county's got to stand good for it. So the property comes. So they need the property back to us. Once that's paid off, it goes back to school system anyway. Correct. Correct. So yeah. we've yeah. Um. I know that Josh is with us this morning, and I took a look at, at how that pump station works. Could you come up and just explain why we're I – know, I know you weren't planning to do this, but, and I know it's a low-pressure system, but if you could come up and just explain how it works or have someone do that. Yeah, I brought our engineer with us. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting because it's actually like a septic tank that the septic tank pumps up to the, the sewer system, I guess. I mean, yeah, you, it's, maybe a, you could... it's a low-pressure system. It's a low pressure system, which I'll let Jeffrey explain a little bit about how it works. Okay. And, and let me ask you this, is or any place that any um, business or uh, home that attaches to the sewer system, they all have to have this uh, sewer, this the low pressure system? Yes, and the, I mean it depends on where it is and the and and. If you're lower the, the than the line, you would. But if you're above the line, you ne not necessarily. Well, you're still going to have to have a little. It's a it's a small pump. Right. That it, to get it into the low pressure force main, um, and 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 push it forward. So yes, they will. But it it's uh, the maintenance is very low on it, which I would. The Maybe just explain it a little bit. You don't have to go into great detail. I won't get into too detail. Thank for your time today. It, it, the, it, it's a low pressure system, meaning that uh, each individual customer, whether it's a, a commercial operation or a residential, has a very small, uh, like half horsepower little motor. So it's very cost effective. And, and so you have a network of, of individual customers pumping into a, a main that has a lot of capacity. And, and with very low pressure, so the, so the probability of bursting or, or problematic issues down the line is very small. That's why we call it low pressure. But it's very expandable, and it's, and it's an affordable option here in the mountains because we don't have to worry about multiple gravity, large diameter gravity pipes and, and those type of issues. Does that help answer your question? <laughs> Yeah, let me ask you this, and, and so I know the easement agreement that we're entering into here indicates the sanitary district is going to go, they're going to put the system in at the sanitary district's expense so long as the person who is utilizing the system takes it over after you put it in, after, after one year, and then makes payments to the sanitary district for the use of the system. That's correct. Just They would be charged the outside sewer rates as anybody would today. But at the end of specifically for Sands Pilot and Riverbend, we're going to install it, set it up, and then the ownership changes at the end. So they're still the operator, okay? But it's much different than those three entities today. It's a, it's a whole lot less manpower and labor, okay? And they have they'll have a little control panel with the little light, and basically if the light goes off, then they need to check into it. We're we're also considering. Uh, for the Riverbend school to hook it into our telemetry system so when that alarm, if it were to go off, then we would be alerted. The, the, the only thing is we would contact Joe Buchanan or whoever with the county schools that's over maintenance and let them know, but we would help be their eyes of knowing that. So okay. it's, it's a lot less labor intensive than what's going on now. Okay, so you're going to install these systems these three systems at your expense, including the one we're approving today, what about future systems for future property owners? 
Um, are you going to put those in or do they have to put those in? I know these are questions that are going to come up, so I'm trying to get them answered <laughs> yeah, ahead of time. <laughs> yeah. it, you know, it's a good question. No, we're not. That we, we do not have plans to. We're, we work with the, the, uh, the Orenco pumps is what we're using, and, and this, this particular outfit will be able, will be able to pass on to, to the newcomers onto the system, but we'll, we'll be able to provide sewer to areas that don't have sewer now. Now there's still going to be expense on their side to hook up into it, and that's part of it. Okay, and what is the approximate cost of that? The, the cost of a the Orenco low pressure system for for a residential customer is comparative to the cost of the installation of, of a septic and nitrification field. It's, it's very close in in, um, in a typical setting. And, and 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 so the front end cost to it to a new residential customer is very similar. Uh, the the commercial costs are 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 a little higher, maybe 35, 40 percent higher, is because the state requires duplex pumps, two pumps, in in the in the low pressure system, whereas a residential customer only is required to have the one pump. So, uh, but in terms of of cost connection to a residential customer, you know, it, it's really a wash if they if they go into the septic business, which we know that's a short term fix, 20, 25 years. It's a long-term healing because they become part of a public collection system. So in long term, it saves them because they don't have to worry about repair or future costs. Yeah. Is, is, right. I think the, the rep said maybe every couple years they might have to get their tank pumped out, and that's about it. Okay. Okay, commissioners, you have any questions? Questions. All right. Thank you. I appreciate that. Is okay. there something else you want to say? No. No. We're All right. Good. You're more than welcome to talk if you want to. No, I'm good. All right. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank you. David, do you have anything else? All right. Uh, commissioners, I'll entertain a motion, if there's no other questions, to approve the sewer easement ag agreement uh, from Haywood County to Junaluska Sanitary District for the temporary construction and installation of a sewer pump station and lines to be located on county-owned property, which is 71 Learning Lane Clyde, which is River Bend, which uh, just right, right after this approval, we're going to approve transferring that back to the school system. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, and that passes unanimously. Okay. All right, thank, thank you. you. I've just got one uh, quick, uh, on a personal note, uh, Commissioner Upton, uh, may not be here at the next meeting, so I just wanted to tell you thank you for all the leadership and guidance you've given me over the years, even when I was started at the school system. Uh, it's been a pleasure to work with you and uh, you know, really going to miss you uh, hanging around and having somebody else to discuss Carolina basketball with. But thank you. You've been a great steward of Haywood County all these years, and I really, really appreciate all the things that you've done for Haywood County. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, David. Uh, all right, next we have a request approval to convey county-owned property, what we were just talking about, it, located at 71 Learning Lane Clyde, known as River Bend Elementary School, to Haywood County Consolidated School System Board of Education. Chip Key and our county attorney is Thank presented. You, Mr. Chairman, first of all, I'm going to volunteer to take Bill's place in the discussions about basketball with David Francis going forward from this day forward to whenever you leave, Bill. <laughs> right. You'll be, it'll be Will. The discussions will be will continue, and now that we have this new manager who's equally involved with sports, we talk about it all the time. Well, we can't talk about football, so we have to talk That's about true. basketball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, it, it's been pretty well explained. In 1996, when this financing was done, types of projects where since the schools cannot borrow money, they transfer property to the county, so the county can use the property for uh, co for, as collateral for loans. And that was done here. The loan was paid off. I'm not sure exactly when. We probably should have, re have uh, conveyed the property back to the schools at that time, but we didn't. So now that this, will be, this uh, deed will be recorded immediately upon the heels and following the recording of the, of the easement, and it's, it'll be conveyed back to the schools subject to this easement in favor of the sanitary district. Um, I did speak with, because this is happening so quickly, Junaluska Sanitary District needed this approved uh, to keep the, um, 
to keep the uh, sewer system continue to be constructed. Um, I spoke with Chuck Francis and Bill Nolte and Pat Smathers about this, um, and just to indicate that, hey, we need to convey this back to you. We didn't really know we own River Bend School, but this easement needs to be put on there. And of course, I think they knew the need of, of the fact that they need the, the sewer easement as well because of the system that they have out there. It's, the life of that system is, is passing quickly. So um, their school board has not approved us conveying the property back, but I'm sure they'll welcome that with this. Um, all right, uh, any other questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion uh, to approve the conveyance of Riverbend School back to the Haywood County Consolidated School System from the county subject to the sewer se easement and agreement that we just approved with Junaluska Sanitary District. So I move. Second. Motion second, I think. Did you get that, Candy? All right. Any discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, and that passes unanimously. All right, and so what we'll need to uh, record, sign and record the easement, and then thereafter we can record the deed. All right, next is a request approval of appointment of Nida Kirkpatrick to the Adult Care Community Home Advisory Committee for long-term care. Bryant Moorhead, our county manager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm asking you to appoint uh, Nida Kirkpatrick to the Adult Care Home Community Advisory Committee for Long-Term Care. She's been a resident of Haywood County for 39 years. She grew up in uh, Mount Sterling area, now lives in Fines Creek. Uh, she holds a nursing degree from Berea College and a master's degree in nursing education from ECU. Uh, she currently volunteers in Buncombe County, but has a desire to uh, do her civic duty here in her home county. And uh, for all these reasons, I think she'd be a great addition to the committee. Okay, commissioners, have any questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion to appoint Nida Kirkpatrick to the Adult Care Com Home Community Advisory Committee for Long Term Care. So moved. Mike? Motion. Second. Brandon, second. Any discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, and that passes unanimously as well. All right, that is all we have for open session. Commissioners, do you have any other items we need to discuss prior to going into closed session? All right, if not, I'll entertain a motion to go into closed session pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143.318.11A3, which is attorney-client privilege, and North Carolina General Statute 143.318.11A6, which is personnel. So move. Second. Any discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All right. And we are in closed session. All right. We are back after closed session. I don't believe we have any other business um, after closed session. However, does any commissioner have anything to they want to take care of prior to the end of the meeting? Okay. If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So Second. Move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.